Okay, folks, this is about tying off. The other day, we put made a little video of me sitting on a chair there and teaching the horse to walk up. So this is the second phase to it. Now, everything I'm going to do today and did the other day is not the first thing you do. You get your horse good about being roped before you do this. So you can see all this leather hanging on this side of the saddle. All the saddle strings and everything on the right side of the saddle goes to the left side of the saddle. I take my rope strap and the, and the, ladigo, or the saddle string, I tie my rope down, I run it through the, the straps for the breast collar. When you're roping with split reins, you keep your right rein on the left side. Now you can hold them any way you want. I put two fingers in mine and that way I can hold the coils. So this is how I would tie off if I had something roped. Dally. And when you dally, I've got my dallies right here in my right hand. I've got the mane as I get off. You hold your dally, you balance yourself with your right hand and hang on to the dally. Right like that. Now, get your rope out of the way. Take another wrap. Left hand, right hand under. One. Under, overlap the dallies. Two. Now this part you can go over the rope or under the rope. I've never seen that it mattered. I'm going to go under and back up to the saddle horn. Left hand, right hand. Once again, one, two. The mistake people make is they put it way down here. Put it right there. Now I am in fact tied off. Now over time, this rope would have been tied all this time. So I'm going to start off there, and I'll take my right rein. Now this is important. Don't tie this too short. Leave enough room where a horse doesn't get scared. Now what you're watching is insurance. Everything I do is safety. Half hitch. A common mistake is leaving the rein laying on the ground. The horse steps up and steps on the rein. This is how tight you make it. It will move on the rope. Now I've got my schooling rein right here. I'll straighten this out so you can see better. This is what it looks like. So now, I'm going to tell my horse to stay there. When a horse is broke to lead, they follow you, they tend to follow you, but you've got to teach them not to. This is my tail of my rope. This may look familiar. Horse has to hold it. Now watch. The tied off rope and the rein are in the same hand. I'm going to pull on the tied off rope because later on I won't be having this rein in my hand. So I'm going to give the cue and pull on the rope at the same time. Now, don't get twitchy if your horse comes this close because what you'll find out later on when you have one hind leg or you need to tie it down or you need to take it off the head, there's nothing more discouraging than have a horse that's worried and it stays out there and it's just not enough for you to get it off their head. It's not fun. Okay, so now you practice 
both rein and rope, sending the horse back. Now what will happen is if you keep your hands quiet, when you actually raise your hand, it really means something to a horse, and the horse will look for it. So you can take your time, it's not a big deal. And I'll tell you right now, the hardest part of this whole thing is keeping this chair tied on behind your saddle. Good luck. So now, I need my horse. Anticipating, I did not raise my hand. The rope is gonna be moving around, it's gonna happen. Do not come forward, horse, until I raise my hand. Now, I let go of the rein and I'm pulling on the rope. I've started the transition. Now, as it turns out, since I did this video sitting on the chair, I've, I've tied off three times doctor and calves on this horse. So, the very first time, she got it. In other words, anything you teach her, show her, she gets worried about it. But I'm telling you, the other day when I tied off on her, she's like, okay, I got this. And it made her feel comfortable to know that she knew how to hold that rope. So now I'm going to not use my rein and send my horse back. Now I'm going to try it with just my hand. Need help? Now I'll go to the rope. Need more help? I'll go to the rein. Now remember, if this happens, you didn't fail. It's just the horse processing it. That's all they're doing is just processing what you're teaching them. So once again, I mentioned this a time or two, if you don't have any patience and just Jerk your saddle and turn your horse out. I can feel the tension right here. Now there's a hundred ways to do this. Okay, that's great. This is how I do it. Now, last time I had to go all the way to the rain. So I'll start there this time. Here it comes, horse. Thank you so much, you're fine. Intentional step and an intentional step. Now something else to remember, it's all blind underneath here. The horse has no vision under here. So you be careful about what you're doing so you don't betray your horse. Now the other day, I'll tell you real quick, I was talking about Florida. And something I forgot to mention, I'm not 100% sure I'm right, but I think cattle on grass, not feedlots, I think Florida has more cattle than anybody in their state. Now, the, the states I want to talk about are Florida, Texas, California, and Hawaii. So I already told you, it was 200 years before California that horses ended up in Florida. As it turns out, it was 100 years before California when cattle turned up in Texas. The thing that all these places have in common is they all have access to the ocean and they were all connected to Spain and Mexico. So Texas is actually four continents as far as I'm concerned. You get a guy that's cowboying in West Texas and talk to him about East Texas, he'd probably just get up and leave and vice versa. The Panhandle, the south coast, the west end, the east end, and then you break it up again after that. The Spanish went in with missions, just like they did in Florida. And just like in Florida, it failed and they all pulled out, but they didn't take the livestock back with them. It was too far to go, so they went feral. So now here's all these cattle, some pigs, some sheep running out there wild, and the settlers show up, and after a few battles and this and that, they end up being a republic. They take over the state, 
And now they're seeing all these feral cattle, so they start catching cattle and putting outfits together and putting brands on them. There was one problem. They had the Mexicans to fight with and they had the Comanches. Because the Comanches weren't going for them and the, the, the Mexicans had already been to war with them. So they had to earn everything they got. And to me, because they don't have any state land, it's all deeded ground, they became furiously independent. In other words, they didn't depend on anybody. They were on their own. They made their own republic. They made everything themselves. There were no government programs. It was a republic. It wasn't a state. By the time it became a state, this was all settled. So now they get these outfits put together. And oh, by the way, some lady in high heels walks across Texas and strikes oil. Okay, now you just change the whole scenario of the entire industry, cattle and petroleum. So what I'm trying to say is, is that it was a hundred years later before the California deal kicked in. And uh, that'll be another story. But just, if you're interested in history, that's the way I read it. Nothing personal. If this was easy, you know everybody would be doing it. So now what's going on is the horse is past the novelty of this thing and she's starting to get her own opinions of it. Okay, all I got to do is outlast her opinions and let her know that mine is the one that actually counts. How many times do I have to lead her ahead by the rain? I don't know. How many times will I? As many as it takes. So that's kind of the end of phase two. I'll probably be here the next time you see me. Now, bear in mind, we're heading to Mexico to get the horses we cross and sell to people up here. So we're gonna be, what do you call it, off the air for a little bit. But um, please, please get a hold of us, questions, comments, and make sure and tell me where you're from because it's real interesting to me. So there you go, this is how this is done. And in Ramal Reigns, you would do this with your tie down, your get down rope. You would never, ever, ever tie a Ramal Rein to anything. Because remember, that's a whole nother story, the bridle horse. Thank you.